This is awesome. If I don't get up this, I can't get home. All right, Josh. Come on, man. Come on. I made it. Oh my god. And the fire is doing actually better now. It seems to be catching a bit more. It's bloody rocky, that's for sure. Alright guys, welcome back to another video. It's uh, Friday afternoon, I've just finished work and I'm off for a solo overnight camp adventure in the Victorian high country. Um, it's actually my first ever solo camping trip, so we'll see how it goes, but I've been itching to get out after getting back from the Flinders Ranges um, a couple months ago, which was just an absolutely epic adventure. Um, that was a two-up adventure with my beautiful and amazing partner who tagged along. Um, eight days, 3,000 kilometers, and Oh, I've just got the bug to, to get out and, and get going again. So, whilst this isn't on the same level uh, or magnitude of, of adventure, it's still going to be an interesting one being the first time I've ever gone uh, solo. And also, the plan is to, uh, to tackle Billy Goat's Bluff, which is a um, the steepest, uh, longer, well, one of the steepest, longest hill climbs uh, in Australia, I'm pretty sure. Like, it's it's quite iconic, uh, iconic, especially in the four-wheel drive community. Um, but I've seen a lot of uh, videos of, of dirt bikes, dual sports and everything tackling it. So, the plan is to ride up to around the Cola or just a little bit further today, um, set up camp, and then tackle Billy, Goat, Billy Goats in the morning, ending up in Dargo, and then really after that I do have a route that takes me through uh, some dirt tracks and stuff but in Victoria there's been an incredible amount of rain lately and a lot of flooding so I do have to be careful where I go um, the rivers are, are, are overflowing and the creeks so yeah the second yeah we'll, we'll see where we end up but the main goal is Billy Goats Bluff so let's get it one thing I think I need to add to the WR is a uh, is a little windscreen. <laughs> it's it's all right because I don't actually get hit around on the head or anything, but your body takes the full brunt of it. And for these freeway transport sections, a little just windshield up here would be nice. So that's an upgrade that's coming. All right, guys. I'm first stop, not too far from home. I'm just. Uh, gonna get some pressure in the tires because they're quite low from my last dirt ride um, and I'll get some supplies from the servo and be ready to go so yeah we'll get back on the road soon temperature is not too bad it's in the high teens I think 18 19 degrees but as we ascend into the high country it's definitely gonna get cooler now I haven't got my thermals on now I probably won't have them on uh, today or maybe to go to sleep in but tomorrow morning I'll definitely uh, definitely need them but uh, for now it's on to the on to the next service station which is the last stop before uh, get, getting out off-road and on the way to Dargo so we'll see how that goes passing through a uh, regional town I just wanted to update you guys I don't think I mentioned it but I'm still rock, rocking the stock seat on the WR and that thing is like an enduro bike seat now I do have a air hawk on it that I used to have on my CRF 250L and honestly if I didn't have that I'd probably have to get surgery to get a new uh, I don't know coccyx and just a whole re new rear end put in because <laughs> it's bloody painful one thing I uh, I didn't pack was uh, my wet weather gear. Oh, what the hell? Random chickens. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't pack my wet weather gear because looking at the forecast, there was no chance of rain. But 
Oh, those clouds are a little bit ominous, but I've, I've got faith that it will hold out and I'm, and I'm glad that I didn't bring it. Otherwise, I would have taken up so much space, but we'll see if I'm going to eat my words. But fingers crossed. All right, guys, my last fuel stop for a while now. I've topped the tank right up. I've chucked my, uh, my winter gloves on and I just stored it. Chuck my winter gloves on because it's getting pretty cold and I won't be filling up now till tomorrow in Dargo, hopefully, if things go to plan. The roads are bloody beautiful. here I think I'm heading somewhere up there Woo! awesome 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 don't want to go off there Guys, I've made it to camp. There's only uh, one other group here. Oh. But this should do for the night. And no service, so I have to keep myself occupied, but I'll be alright. Just trying to stay away from any big trees, but I think if I stay on this side I should be alright. Flat. And now to get unpacked and get a fire going. Alright, I've just set up the swag. Looks uh Looks decent, took me a couple minutes. First time I've ever set one up, but uh, went all right. So, I've already got the mattress in there. I rolled it up with the mattress, so I'll inflate that, chuck the sleeping bag in, and then get a fire going. Going well, going well. And there we have it, with the sleeping bag, the pillow, and the inflatable mattress. All done, that is so quick. Wow, much better than a tent, but I don't know, we'll see how how comfortable it is, but um, onto the fire now. All right, I've got my ax, I'm looking for wood. The only thing is with this campsite is that everyone's already chopped everything down or there's nothing dead around. So I want to see what I can find, but um, I'll get back to you hopefully with a fire going. Oh, I've managed to get some sort of fire going. It's, uh, it's not great because everything's waterlogged. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, it's hard to find anything that hasn't already been used that's dead. So I don't know if I can keep this one going for long. Um, I don't know if you can hear it sizzling the water away, but let's see how this goes. Hopefully I can get something, but I don't need it to cook. It's more so for, for light. Um, I've got a head torch, which I'll crack out if I need to. Well, actually I will, because this is dying. Come on. Heat, heat up the wood. I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna catch enough. We'll see, we'll see. But even then, I've just, there's no big logs to sustain it. Everything's pretty boggy. It looks like their fire's even not really running. I see a little bit of smoke, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Something to keep me occupied. All right, guys, I managed to get a pretty decent one going. Uh, I'm not sure how much wood I've got to sustain it though, so I'm gonna keep looking, but I moved the bike because it was getting smoked out and now the smoke just follows it. Isn't that always the case? But um, I'll keep finding some more wood and as it gets dark, I'll look to wind down. Um, uh, it's past seven o'clock now. I'll get in bed early, wake up early and attack Billy Goat's Bluff tomorrow, which will be exciting. Well, let me see if I can keep this fire going. 
I thought while well, I still got this fire going that I'll cook dinner because it's actually past eight o'clock now and some Mexican chili uh, and it's 806 calories so it's actually quite uh, a lot of calories so we'll see how it goes but I've got the the gas the ignition igniter I don't even know what that is and then my pot so for this one I just need to boil water and put it in the bag which means no cleanup which I'm a fan of so let's get cracking with this all right water boiling fire somewhat going it's actually pr producing a lot of heat but there's just no flames everything's wet but uh it's a lot darker than it actually is the uh the camera seems to show more but um thought while that's cooking I'll talk about my experiences with the first time um solo camping and it's uh peaceful very peaceful no one to tell you you know you got to be here or no one to wait on um and you're just in your own mind but the negatives of that is that it can also be isolating um especially with the fact that I've got no phone reception, no mobile internet. Um, so that can be not scary, but you just need to take precautions. And, you know, I've got my PLB with me. It's on, in my riding jacket. Um, I've told people where I'm going. So I feel, I feel safe, but it is something different. So it's something to get used to. But, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting into bed um, after I have dinner. I've got nothing to do. I didn't download any movies or anything, but I'm, I'm pretty knackered anyway. I, I, I've worked today, so um, yeah, we'll, we'll get this meal cooked and be ready for a big day tomorrow. And the fire is doing actually better now. It seems to be catching a bit more. Let's check the progress on the uh, water. Nah, not even close. Alright, water is boiling. So now, i got to uh, transfer it into the bag without burning myself. I'll check back in. Success. This smells pretty damn good actually. So I'm keen to get into this. Alright guys, my fire is all but gone out. Um, I had the dinner. It was actually delicious. I'm, I'm, I'm quite full. I don't know if it was 800 calories, but it was um, it was good. Um, actually, let me take this off and point it at me. So I spoke to the guys that are here. Um, Four-wheel drives, nice guys. And they came from one of the sections I'm going, and it, it's pretty rough, so we'll see how it goes tomorrow. But, um, yeah, um, they actually had a bit of a fire going, but they, they brought firewood and, and chopped it elsewhere, so... Um, and they, they already used it all. I, was, I wasn't going to ask anyway. So, yeah, I'm going to... I'm actually going to start wrapping up now. It's uh, just past nine. And get into bed shortly. But I may or may not check in again. If I don't, I'll see you guys in the morning. All right, guys. It is almost 5 a.m. It's pitch black still. My, um... Outside of my swag, it's got a lot of condensation, but it didn't rain overnight. But, um, bike looks good. So, I'm actually going to get up now because I'm not having the greatest sleep, but it was enough to get me uh, energised and ready to go. So, I'm going to get a coffee and some breakfast going. Alrighty, just past 5am um, and I'm boiling my water. <sighs> To make a coffee so let's get this in me get packed up and hopefully i take off as the sun's rising i um i'm glad that i i'm glad that i've put in the fuel um last night and didn't wait around until the cola because i think that opens up at 9 a.m i'm gonna be long gone by then so let's get cracking Alrighty, let's 
actually not too cold outside, but I'm really looking forward to this coffee. There we go. Alright guys, it's um, almost 6 o'clock, I've just been packing up the campsite, I've just got to load the bike, but the campsite is uh, clean, packed everything up, man the swag is so easy to unpack and and repack again, so I'm, I'm glad I, I bought the swag, I've just got um, my headset charging, which is actually done, and now I'm just gonna put some GoPro batteries on charge inside the tank bag. But looking to take off in the next 15, 20 minutes. Sunrise is almost happening. Very foggy. Let me switch the camera around. I don't know if you can see the mountain up there, but there's fog cover all over. But hopefully, I can see a break in the sky there. So we'll see. And just for breakfast, I've got this oat slice. I've actually got two of them. They are 313 calories. So I've got almost, you know, I've got over 600 calories now. I'm, I want to have one now and then one a little bit later, but 600 calories to get me through to Dargo. Um, but I do have another one, that, one of those dinners if I get lost and I need another 800 calories. I've got it, but um, fingers crossed that doesn't happen. And... Yeah, I'm going to load the bike and I will catch up with you guys in the helmet shortly. Alrighty, about to take off. GPS set. Hopefully the bike starts. Just gave it a quick check over. Oil's good. Chain. A little bit on the loose end, but that's alright. A slappy chain is a happy chain. Alright, hopefully I don't wake those people up. Probably did. Bike's good. Locked and loaded. I don't know why that's like that. down jacket on so it's actually really warm um, but that's because I'm gonna be ascending so I don't want to get too I don't want to get cold and then have to pull it put it on so I'd rather have it on and then take it off if I get too warm oh is there a better feeling than waking up jumping on the bike exploring roads that you've never been down and areas you've never visited Honestly, I don't think there is. I feel like I'm in like Jurassic Park or something. This is uh, so different to anywhere I've ridden. Keen to hit the dirt though. Still, to this trip, I haven't actually hit any dirt. So, I think that's coming up soon. Let's see. Finally. Finally off-road, hit the dirt. Let's... Uh, See where this leads us. I think our first stop is um, Kelly's Hut, one of the huts littered throughout the uh, high country. Hundreds. Um, I think there's actually a couple along the route, but this one I specifically navigated to. Not that it's any different to the others, I don't think, but just saw it on the map and pointed it there. Cool. These bumps. Hopefully the uh, hopefully the luggage holds. But look at that cloud cover oh man hopefully there's other people out here and i'm not the only person coming through here in case anything goes wrong but like i've mentioned um, i've got my plb so but that's why i've taken it easy don't want to come off here and have something happen so no reason to push it hard Passing through the uh, through the fog or low-lying clouds, whatever they are, but visibility is not too great. But it looks like up ahead it's clearing. Maybe I'm passing actually through them, so it looks beautiful actually. Not too many, not too many clouds, but man, this road isn't actually in the best condition. Oh wow! Well, if 
I run out of water, there's plenty of water around here that's uh, fresh. Sun's just coming up now over the mountains, so hopefully that dissipates some of this um, fog cover. Turn off to Callie's Lane where the hut is, so it's very boggy, so I want to make sure that whenever I go down I can come back. Oh wow. Looks like you can probably camp out here. Oh, it's closed. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice of you to camp out here. But that looks quite high. Beautiful. Oh, that's unfortunate. It might be placebo, but I feel like the bike isn't as powerful. And I know that's supposed to be the case, but I'm not sure if it's as apparent with fuel injected bikes like this one, but de I definitely know it's a thing with carbureted, but given that there's less oxygen up here, I just feel like the bike hasn't got as much pep. Still running fine, just, um, just doesn't feel the same. Yeah, no, nah, definitely just doesn't pull as hard. Not that you can use WR250R and pull hard in the same sentence, but you get what I mean. Roads are full of bloody potholes everywhere. You gotta, you gotta be careful. Not that the WR can't hit these potholes hard, but you don't want them shaking off your luggage or, you know, at worst you denting, denting a rim. But you know, it looks like it's cleared up here. But yeah, I've not seen a single other car, so <laughs> maybe I am the only one up here. Oh my god, it has just gone cold. Alrighty, it's been, uh, I've been on, on this track now for two hours and still haven't come across anybody, which is good and bad. I mean, it's nice having the road to yourself, but obviously you're still cautious around every corner, but um, it's also bad where, you know, the road, less traffic, if something goes wrong, less people to, uh, to help out. But that's why, I try and be as self-sufficient as I can. I've got all my cooking stuff, I've got my petrol, my extended tank. Um, got a decent amount of water. And I've got my PLB if worse comes to worse. So prepared to not come across anybody, but yeah, just an observation. Oh, there's Billy Goat's Fluff! Oh, hey! Alright, let's go. Pinnacles first, and then we're coming back. Damn, it's getting real now. It's getting real. Ugh, easy on the WR, mate. Oh. Made it. Where we park the bike? Here. <sighs> Hard yakka, but my god, that view. I hate leaving the bike unattended. But it's worth it. I got one big climb to the top. Let's get it. Oh. MX boots aren't the best thing to uh, hike in, but they sure do give good protection. These have saved my legs numerous times. Oh man, that, that is cool. Yeah. Oh my god, my legs feel like jelly. Probably the high altitude. Come on. Come on. Probably also because I'm rushing it. But it's mainly because I want to oh, I want to get back to the bike. Oh. Oh. 
Awesome. Two guys of 4G up here. Whew. Calm down, Josh. Come on. I made it. Oh my god. Let's keep going. Oh my god. Oh, at the top, this is Pinnacles Lookout, and yeah, you can see all the different ranges and everything. Mount Blue Rag, I'm assuming that's where Blue Rag Track is. I wanted to go there, but the main way to go there is closed, and I don't really have enough time, so next high country trip where I'll be going there, and I'll be going up Billy Goats, but look, I'm going to go down it now, and... If it's not as bad as I think, maybe I'll just come up it and then, but then I guess I've got to come back down it again, which is just a pain. So we'll see, we'll see. But look at that view. I don't know if the camera picks up the mountain ranges it's all the way back. There's mountains and then there's here and to the right here, I can't see anything because the clouds completely blocked it. So eerie, but cool. The clouds right there, look at that steep drop off. Gives you a bit of like vertigo. Oh. Here I am at the start of Billy Goat's Bluff Track. Well, at the top, I'm gonna descend. I've taken off my down jacket because it's probably gonna get warm. Checking the luggage is quite secure. So I'm gonna push it back a bit just so I've got more room. Alrighty. Ah. Let's go. Oh man, here we are. Man, hope I'm on the right track. I thought I'd be descending the whole time. Just remember, I'm on my own. The, the last thing I want is to hurt myself or destroy the bike, like crack an engine case or something. Holy shit, this is already... This is already pretty gnarly. no mucking around I commend people that take their big adventure bikes I really do oh man this is slippery this is chewed up man oh all right I gotta keep going and not let go not not back off I can't back off here that is so slippery whoa well oh that is just clay God, hopefully this side now is sunny and it's not so damp like that. <sighs> I mean, the very worst is I just ditch the luggage right up. It looks like this part is only three kilometers, so. I think I'll be all right. You know, one thing I didn't do was check my brake pads, which is silly, but 
I thought on a bike with only three and a half thousand Ks that there's no way I've used up all the brake pads but then I remember reading that when you go in the sand you know you can burn them up in an hour of riding I don't know how but apparently you can and I did just come back from Little Desert not that long ago Oh, they're all little things you learn. It's bloody rocky, that's for sure. Whoo wee! I've never ridden anything like it. I know I need to go quicker so that the front wheel doesn't deflect as much. And I think as I get more confident, I will. But holy holy cow <laughs> never even used that term in my life but it's deserving of it oh my god this is awesome Man, for some of these sections, I'm almost more tempted just to leave it in neutral, which means I don't get the engine braking, but just so that I've got zero chance of whiskey throttling it over the edge. Not that I think I would, but... It's just there's some dire consequences if, if I do. I already know the GoPro is going to make it look so... like, flat, as it always does like <laughs> oh man this is this is nerve-wracking but it does look like you can get a lot of traction on this track so coming up I don't want to jinx it but I don't think it would be the hardest thing in the world but the deflecting is Definitely difficult. Man, I think I mentioned it before, but I really commend people that do this stuff on big bikes. I own the T7 and, you know, I felt like I didn't push the limit on that. Like, you got people like Paul Taris that do bloody Erzberg rodeo on it, but I think I took that through some pretty technical stuff and my god is it a lot harder but it is fun and it's rewarding doing it on the big bikes but it's almost like a cheat mode on the dual sport and then the enduro bike it's like oh my god so easy but then if you do hard enduro those enduro bikes start to get more tested oh man all right now i don't know if brake fade is going to become an issue here so maybe Maybe using gear would be wise to lay off the brakes a little bit. I do need to be careful of oncoming four-wheel drives because there isn't that much space here. But what a hill climb to do. Next time I come, I'm coming up it and I'm coming with someone else, like I'm not going to do it solo. Oh my god! Probably not the best line there, but... Holy crap! This climb would be crazy. You know what makes it difficult is the, um... The washouts that suck your momentum. Whew. You know, uh, uh. oh my god, this is this is crazy coming up. Oh, rear is just going everywhere. I might take a break down here just to allow the brakes to cool off not that I'm again I'm not feeling any fade but 
better to deal with it sooner rather than later. Alright, you get quite a lot of traction on those rocks. So they're, they're probably actually the best line if you can go alongside one that's not too steep. Ah, I think that's the helipad. That's what they call it. Down there. That clearing. So, I think after that it's not as steep. So, we're getting there. We're getting there. Not a single car has come yet. Or bike, for that matter. Actually, no, I'm going to sit. Chickening out. It's just finding that right line of traction without, you know, you're skidding the rear a little bit, but not to the point where you go down uncontrollably. Oh, that's chopped up as. That's crazy. Who even built this track? Imagine there's nothing but rock here and a bunch of guys coming with their machinery or whatever they use and build this track. And does this track actually serve ugh, any purpose? I don't know. I love it, but those guys are... Oh, I'm getting some... Speed. Those guys are crazy. Arm pump. Arm pump. Some insane, absolutely insane arm pump. I don't think I can come up this on my own today with this gear but I'll never know until I try it so if you want to see me try it one day then feel free to subscribe you'll probably see me falling over a lot more than I already have not well actually I haven't but I do fall over a lot in general on my on the channel but I don't know, things are working out. Ugh, I probably just jinxed it. I probably just jinxed it, didn't I? Gillisly steep. Ugh. I don't want to go over the handlebars because I'll re-tear my pack if it's a serious off. Why did I go for these? this line? Those rocks are just going to throw me around everywhere. And it's closer to the edge. Oh man, that looks steep. Dude, if I can't get up that, I'm stuffed. All right. Oh man. Come on, Josh. Oh my gosh, I shouldn't have stopped. I should not have stopped. I was just worried what was over this. <laughs> if I don't get up this, I can't get home. Oh man. Do I go back down and get momentum? <sighs> That's probably the smarter thing to do, but I think, I think I do with these tires have just enough traction to get up there in first gear. Alright Josh, come on man, come on, come on you got this dude, alright if I'm going to bail, I'll bail left, bail the bike up against the mound, alright come on. Oh yes, oh yes, Billy Goat's Bluff.
and I'm the only one here. I feel so isolated. Dude, this is dead. If you could just see my rear wheel there, I was flying around. Probably should have gone the left line there, but what you gonna do? Nothing. You do nothing. Oh man, this part on a um on a 415 Juro just wop wop up the hills. That'd be good fun. That would be really good fun. Oh man. I, I know I mentioned it earlier, but I'm gonna repeat it again. I still can't believe people take huge adventure bikes or have taken huge adventure bikes up this. Not very common. I mean, I've, I think I've only ever seen a video of one GS coming up this and they struggled. They probably dropped it like 30 times and I don't even know if they finished it. But, um, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Ugh. I'm talking too much, you're not concentrating. Oh, my rear is going everywhere. Oh my god, is this the end? It is. I freaking did it. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Nice. But my plan now was to go to Dargo, which is that way, fill up and then come back down this way and then turn off down some dirt tracks that lead me then down to the freeway. But man, my butt is sore. So I think I'm going to call it, um, I think I'm going to call it for the trip. I tested the WR, it did well. Um, and actually, I don't think I need to get fuel. I think I can just get to the freeway. That seems like a good amount. That seems like just under half. So I should be able to get to one of the towns on the freeway um, without needing to go to Dargo and waste 9Ks up and back. Um, now, WR did exceptionally well. Uh, Billy Ghost was awesome. I'm keen to come back and attempt it that way and going up. So... Like I mentioned, um, subscribe if you want to see me uh, tackle billy goats. Um, I'd love to. I'd love to do that soon. Now that I know what it what it entails, having come down it, um, and now that we're getting better weather, is the perfect time. So I'll be back soon enough. Uh, not solo though for that trip. Hopefully I can get um, my mate on his DRZ and my brother on his CRF at, at the very least. Um, and potentially Harrison on his KTM um, but yeah I'm keen for that trip um, but other than that thanks for watching guys subscribe, like and I'll catch you in the next video